Uh, hi, my name is Duncan Huang, and I'm here with APANO, the Asian Pacific American Network of Oregon. Um, right now, we're at Harrison Park uh, School, um, located right outside the Jade District. Um, and I'm here with Ralph Lethwich. Um, he's a full-time volunteer um, with the SUN program here. So I'm Ralph Lethwich. I've been at Harrison Park School or with the school for about eight years now. I retired from Intel after 27 years there and decided to give back to the community. Um, I really enjoy working with this school because of the diverse population that's here uh, and the great need and the wonderful appreciation that the people show for everything that I do here. Um, started off by working with the uh, technology committee, um, went on to run the chess club, the gardening program. I've been a soccer coach, lots of other activities. And one of the things I do a lot now is organize all the volunteer activities, uh, work parties or anything that we have here. So like today we had a work party from Multnomah University. They sent over 25 uh, students and they did a wonderful job um, building a vegetable garden space for our kindergarten classes. Yeah, Harrison Park School is the uh, largest K through eight in Portland Public Schools. They, um, there's about 780 kids in the school. Um, we have the most diverse population um, that you could possibly want. Really, it's great. We have, start that one over. Harrison Park School has got about 780 students in our school. Um, we have a very diverse population. It's over 72% students of color, um, generally about 30% Asian, 20% African American, about 17% Hispanic. We have about 40 different languages spoken at the homes of the uh, families that we have here. And we also have the largest number of English language learners to any school in Portland Public Schools. Um, the uh, demographics also include uh, a lot of need. And one of the things that, that indicates that is our 86% free and reduced lunch enrollment. Well, this room right now serves as a place where we can have um, backpacks packed up every weekend to send home to the families. They, we have a lot of need for food on the weekends for the, for the families, and we use all this food here to um, uh, load up backpacks every weekend. It's usually about 30 to 35. Um, generally, we have somewhere around 250 to 300 families that have enrolled in the program, so we cannot come close to meeting the needs. Um, so there's a lot, lot, of, lot of food insecurity with the families that we have at the school. So the, uh, one of the other big issues, and it's interesting, um, mentioned by Steve Novick on the City Club last week, that sidewalks are a big issue in this area. There's many of our roads that are not do not have sidewalks on them. In fact, across the street from the school, we do not have a sidewalk. And we have kids trying to get out of cars on either side of the, the road and being dropped off and things like that. And it's raining and there's puddles and they're trying to dodge across the, the street. It's just not very safe for them. Um, and when Steve was here, he asked our fifth grade class, uh, what do they want, more parks or more sidewalks? And the fifth graders really wanted more sidewalks. But, you know, you can see at that young age, they realize that, that the real need out here is to support getting the roads and the sidewalks better um, maintained in this area. We also um, have just in general a need for uh, social services for the families here. Frequently, we'll have families that are um, homeless that are going to school here or they'll be going to school here and they'll find out one night that they don't have a home that night and I've had kids who are enrolled in my chess club who will uh, come you know come to school one day and they, they won't have a home that night and it's really hard for them to concentrate in school when they don't know when where they're going to home whether they're gonna have food or shelter or anything like that it makes a huge difference to these children's lives yeah, we, we have a um, sort of bursting at the seams kind of situation here at the school we, we have more students than, than the building could handle. So over the summer, they turned some of the locker rooms into um, classrooms. And, you know, they basically to do that, they removed the lockers um, and then um, 
lay down some tile and that's it. They're, they're really, you know, they still have the, the toilets flushing in the background because they have an automatic toilet flushing system. Um, they, you know, they didn't put in the ventilation quite right, so they can't close the door. So you, you, you have the, the smells coming from the bathrooms. Uh, and it's just a really a, a, not a most optimal situation you could figure out to put a child in um, that's trying to learn um, and is struggling anyway. I, I think that, that all the, the different people living in the neighborhood have many of the same challenges. I don't think that there's anything that I can think of that's specific to Asian Pacific Islanders. I think they're all challenged with you know, finding reasonable um, work opportunities that will be available to them. Um, I know several of the kids in our chess club that I talked to that their their parents can't come to the tournaments and the weekends and stuff like that because they're they're working one or two evening jobs or you know weekend jobs and they they're not able to to be there um, and they work at very um, difficult situations. I also run the um, the cash AARP um, tax center at the site. And last year we did over 250 returns for free. And seeing the situation that so many of those families come in where they work, you know, three to five jobs just to try to get things, you know, together, to piece together some sort of work situation that's reasonable for them. And it's really tough, the, the, the amount of opportunity that's out here. It'd be wonderful if we got some r real living wage jobs and uh, real, you know, something in manufacturing or something that could come out to this area and really help. Well, I am really hope, I think that the, the, the Jade District really is a nice way for the um, PDC and Portland in general to look at an area that, that has a lot of potential, has great um, ideas on what they want to do. And there, there are some really great people out here and great businesses already located here, but then to support them with positive uh, messages and they, that, that they are able to promote what's going on here as a destination for other people to come to and that it makes it a better place to live and that they are able to look at it. People don't look at this as a place to drive through, but as a destination.